Okay, so I've got everything we need back for the spindle. Um, pretty much as far as I'm aware to put it all back together now. I wasn't gonna do this just yet, but I've just started another job um, and it's only mild still in the VF3 and I'm having the same problems before, um, squealing, end mills, uh, quite bad fretting on the tool holders and breaking tools that shouldn't be breaking. And it's mainly through vibration because of the spindle taper is so bad. So I've decided I want to jump back on this and get this built up. I was waiting for a few things that have just come back. So I mentioned in one of my previous videos, just at the end, that I actually sent away the spacers. So these are the bearing spacers and they're a matched height set and they weren't perfectly true. So I sent them away and got them reground. So they just had to tickle um, a smidge off of each face to make sure they were a nice matched pair. And now if you put them on the surface plate, they've done it anyway. But if you put it on the granite plate now, put a clock on it and check them, they are nice and true. Whereas before they had about a 0.1 deviation. So they were a little bit misshaped. Now the other thing was this main shrink collar here um, that's crazy pitted um, in a right old state. I was going to reuse it because the bore looked okay, but it turns out when I sent this back to Middle and Machine Tool Recon, I said, can you lick the face of this as well? Because obviously when you press the bearings down, um, you want the face to be perpendicular to the bore. So as it's pushed down, everything is nice and true. And they said, this is actually really badly ovaled and out of shape and they wouldn't advise using it. So they turned me up another one, which um, was worthwhile for the cost, letting them do it. Obviously I can turn the part, that would be no problem at all, but I'd still have to send it to them to get the ID board and the faces board perpendicular or ground, shall I say, um, ground perpendicular to each other again so it's true and they did the same with the top spacer for the top bearing. Um, so everything there is now ready to go. So we haven't got to use this shoddy old collar. These are just the old bearings. We've got our new bearings here um, and our top bearings. And I'm gonna still go with the NSK high precision on the top, which we established before, sets the spindle up to be able to run 10,000 RPM. I don't know if I'll be able to do that in the parameters and change something on the machine or if the gearbox gears are all the same to run that sort of speeds I'm not too sure but I'm not fussed about that but that's what come out and that's what I'm going to put back in um, we've got a new o-ring seal on there we've put a new o-ring face in here we've cleaned all these I've uh, tapped out run a tap through the threads in the main cartridge on the nose and on the top cap to make sure that the bolts are gonna go in nicely. We've cleaned the bolts up. Now, the next thing to really do is to start fitting the bearings and the collars and everything onto the spindle shaft. Now, guys are gonna pick holes in me for this because I shouldn't really have it all sitting on a bit of toweling because you'll get lint and, and bits of dust and dirt, but I understand that this is not good practice when you're putting together a precision spindle and touching precision bearings but I'm doing this video based on general Joe blogs working out of their run-of-the-mill machine shop on their bench whilst they're doing other things keeping it relatively clean it's definitely not the best way to do it um, but kind of I don't want to see the effects it has but this is my real life scenario I'm not tidying up everything super clean and everything to do it i'll just keep everything run of the mill clean and tidy put it back together put it back in the machine and we'll see how we get on be interesting to see how long it lasts when i've just done it um myself at mediocre standards compared to doing it properly like an actual spindle rebuilder would do uh, with a proper setup with a clean room with everything absolutely 100 percent dust and dirt free I'm just taking it apart, throw it back together. So yeah, don't pick holes in me for doing it this way, but this is how it's gonna be done on this video for me. So the bearings are gonna be assembled back to back. And by back to back, that means the um, number and the printed side of the bearings face each other. So that's the back face. 
or the front face, I don't know what you want to call it, that will go on first, then we'll have our spacer, and the other bearing here, where you see the part numbers, they will face each other, and we will also align the small dot, if possible, um, with each other on the inner races, and then the outer races as well, we will try and align, um, if I can see them, you might be able to pick it up on the video. I don't know if you're going to be able to. You've got two indicators there. So when you run back to back, that is the orientation you want to see. So two lines towards two lines, rather than if you did it that way, it'd be point to point. So back to back is that way, right in to right in. That's how they will sit and you want to align them and put them on the machine like that when you put it back into the cartridge, if possible. That is um, what I'm aware of as far as I've read up. So that's the way to do it. So yeah, I'm keeping them sort of in the packet to try and keep any dirt I can away for the minute. Now I may, I'm not sure how tight the bearings are going to be to sit onto this part of the collar. I should be able to push them on without too much issue. Um, I'll probably use a bit of tube to the right length over the top and just do them with the Arbor hand press because they're not going to take crazy amounts of force. And then when it comes to doing the shrink fit collar, I've got a hot plate that I'm going to plug in and we'll heat that up to about 200 degrees. And then we should be able to drop that on. Again, I'll have the spindle set up in the press. We should be able to drop that collar on. And then when we get down here, I'll have a bit of tube and all, as far as I'm aware, all I need to do, because the, um, the preload is ground into the bearings, I just need to keep a little bit of force on it um, for that few seconds while it cools and clamps tight, and that should be enough. I haven't got to put it in the press and absolutely roar on it. Um, I'll probably just put my weight on the end of the bar for 30 seconds while it cools down and I'm hoping that should be enough. Again, I'm no expert, it's trial and error. So it'd be interesting to see after my style of assembly and rebuild, how long this actually lasts. So I'm gonna get this set up in the press, get everything ready and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're just using this tube. So this is just a turned bit of alley tube. So I've faced the ends so they're nice and um, flat. Got the first bearing on, and we're just going to use the press by hand to push it down. It doesn't take much force, um, so there's no real worries about this. Once I turned it, I cleaned the inside of this tube, put a rag around it, cleaned it out with power clean, so we're not worrying about dust falling down into it. But again, this is like real life, general, everyday workshop conditions, and this is the sort of thing you're going to be using if you're doing it yourself. You could probably do it nicer and take more care in some senses, but it's just what I've got, and you can see how easy that press is on. I can probably just do it with the hand wheel. There you go. Just a few taps to make sure that is now at the bottom. So I'm just going to clean this up, make sure there's no dust on it. And to be fair, this blue roll comes out pretty dust free. You can see the newly ground faces on there from the guys and mainly Steve who I've been dealing with at Midland Machine Tool Recon. So that's a slip fit over there, no pressing required. Now we're going to get the second bearing. Line it up by eye as best you can. And then again, make sure there's no dust on there. And I'm just going to put a light. I'm only using like a WD-40 oil in there. Back on.
try and hold this up here one-handed, but it's quite heavy. So there's the easy bit of getting our um, spacers and our bearings back on the bottom half. Now is the shrink fit collar. Now I'm pretty sure I'm not just gonna press this on um, using this, and this is actually too big to go in my uh, fly press. So I'm gonna to have to heat this up a little bit, and I'm gonna do it on the hot plate this time. So it should be nice and gradual. And then we should be able to put it over there. Um, it's a nice slip fit. And then we've just got to push it down that small distance, keeping a little bit of pressure on it. Using this, again, I'll have the spindle set up on there. I'll probably, if this tube should be the same size for that. Yep, the tube's the same size. So I should be able to heat this up to around 200 degrees. Drop that over the top there and then just keep a little bit of pressure on it with the tube and then that should be enough um, to get everything locked in place. So it's going to take a minute to get that warmed up, well more than a minute, but I'll get that on the hot plate and I'll bring you back. Okay, so this is the hot plate I've got to warm up these two shrink fit spacers. To be fair, I could have left this one off to now because I probably won't get a chance to do that one. Um, today, or saying that I might do, but this is the one we want. So we'd set this at 100 and, um, I put it at 200 and it's just gone down a bit and I think that's gonna be more than enough. Now this is perfect uh, for heating these up nice and evenly without putting them under a flame and any grief that you might get from doing that. So we've got the spindle in there. So now we're gonna drop that shrink fit collar over the top of here, put our tube onto it and then we'll, um, we'll use this lever and I'll just use my weight to pull down on that and keep that compressed. Um, and hopefully my weight will be enough to keep the preload on until it's set. I say set until it's cooled down, which probably will only take a few seconds. So I'll just grab my welding glove so I can lift that up without burning my hand. Again, it kind of, it's a shame I have to tilt that forward to get the collar on, but I'm hoping at this temperature, which is 180 degrees, that it should just slip down there without any issues. Now we've cleaned the inside of the collar. So let's have a go. cooling already. So I'll just keep my weight on that for a few seconds. And I reckon that is all it's gonna take. But that cooled extremely quickly. And that was at 180. I did say previously in the video that I was gonna to go to 200. But being a little bit impatient, and already that was too hot to touch. The heat soak into this now, you can now touch that by hand. That's how quickly that cooled. But hopefully that's all I need. So while I'm here and the fact this is hot, I'm gonna take out our other two bearings. And these again were only a light press fit, but they are um, again they're the precision NSK bearings, which makes us believe this was for a 10K spindle. And what I'll need to do is get a smaller bit of um, tube quickly. Okay, so I found me a bit of tube. These ones are obviously gonna go on a lot easier because they're just a light press fit as well. So we'll just get these going on there. Doesn't take much. and they just go down to the shoulder. There isn't any form of spacer in between these ones. So again, they're just right into right in, back to back bearing. So 
So yeah, these ones like that are just back to back. And then we have the same scenario with our slip fit collar. which goes the smaller diameter downwards. So we just drop that on there. That goes straight on. And again, I'm just gonna put a little bit of pressure on there. So yeah, that is the bearings on. A little bit slapdash the way I do it, but this is probably how any of you guys might do it in your day-to-day -day workshop with the tools that you've got available. And like I said before, by no means, is this the way that a proper spindle rebuilder would do it? Not in a million years. But my spindle was just such bad condition that whatever happens this way, this has cost me less money. Still probably cost me about a thousand pounds for the bearings, the regrind, the straighten, um, the surface grinding of the collars and stuff like that. But it's definitely gonna be a lot better than it was. And the main issue for me is the sticking tools in that bad taper. So the fact that it's gonna have new bearings is gonna be brilliant. But if the tools don't stick anymore, I will literally be over the moon with that because that's my issue. Like today, I was running a job in mild steel, not even anything special. And um, the problem I had was I have to do an optional stop every single tool change because if not, it gets stuck and alarms out. So we are fitted. Everything is on. And again, that has cooled down to the touch already. So let's try and just move the camera there. So there's our freshly rebuilt spindle, ready to go. New bearings, reground spacers, Nice new shrink fit collar from Midland Machine Tool Recon. Two new bearings at the top. Shrink fit recollar, uh, all reground. That is good to go back inside the casing. So that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you enjoy um, watching what's going on here. Please like and subscribe if you like the content. And then I think I'll bring you back for a final one We'll install it into the actual cartridge or the housing, whichever you want to call it, and then I'm going to put it back in the machine. I'll probably cut that one a little bit shorter, showing you it going back in the machine and putting the drawbar in, um, and then I'll skip the actual assembly into the machine because it's kind of exactly the same as when we took it out, and then hopefully we'll do some test cuts. I'm not sure how long it's going to be before I manage to get that done, but the sooner the better because I've got jobs to do. So, cheers for watching. See you again soon.